This is Father Rob, Pastor Nativity of Mary, Catholic Church in Janesville. And welcome back to another video with the Catechism with our kindergartners, first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth grade friends. And any parents and guardians who are watching, welcome. And anybody else watching us this afternoon or this morning, whenever you're watching this, welcome. This week, I want to reflect with you all on some of the things that we do during Mass. And we do a number of things that we call gestures. And gestures are actions that we perform without speaking. So, for example, when we first go to the pew, and then you might notice that people are getting down on their knees, one or two, and then they make the sign of the cross, and then they go into the pew. Well, that's called genuflection. And a genuflection is acknowledging that somebody is there and that a great respect is to be given to that person who is there. So who is there? Well, the genuflection is being made towards Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, straight ahead. And so we get down on bended knee and we acknowledge that Jesus is there and also we acknowledge that Jesus is the King, the King of not of the United States, but Jesus is king of our hearts and Jesus is the king of the universe. That Jesus is ruler of all. And so we bend the knee before the Lord and we acknowledge him for who he is as our king. So a gesture is, that, is an expression of our body and our spirit to something that we believe in. So... A genuflection, for example. Now, we do some other things during Mass, and a lot to cover, but not today. But one I do want to cover right after that is what we do, we Christians, we Catholics anyway, what we do, the sign of the cross, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, when we make the sign of the cross, what are we doing? Again, we're taking with our body and our soul, because we are made of both, and we are acknowledging someone and our beliefs about that somebody. So in the case for us, there's two things that we're doing when we sign ourselves like this. So the first thing is that we believe that God shared everything just like us in body and he had a soul. Jesus had both. And number two, what we are admitting or sharing with people when we make the sign of the cross is that Jesus died on a cross. And we just celebrated that a few weeks ago. And that Jesus, he died on a cross, and he truly did die. He had blood and water that flowed from him when he died. And also, we tell people, by making the sign of the cross, that we are saved through his resurrection. Because Jesus is no longer dead, but we say, as Christians, that he is alive not dead. And so we celebrate that and make that sign of faith when we make that sign of the cross with the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when we do make that sign of the cross, we, we tell people long ago or a short time ago, depending, of our baptism. When the priest or the deacon or the pastor, minister, whoever baptized you, if you're baptized, that the priest or the minister made the sign of the cross in your forehead. And then also later on in the, in the baptism that they would have poured water over your head and would have said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when we make the sign of the cross, it's a statement of our faith. But there's also something too that the cross does when we make that sign of the cross. And that is, it reminds us of the presence of God. It reminds us of the presence of God. And we also are asking God for his blessing. God said, ask and you shall receive. And so we take Jesus at his word. And so we take him at his word, and we're making that sign of the cross, and we ask God for his blessing upon herself. Or maybe you notice there might be a priest that would give a blessing like this, when he makes the sign of the cross on you, or perhaps maybe the priest is blessing something or someone. So it could be your mom, 
It could be a car. I blessed cars, by the way. Uh, I have a book on my shelf that called the Book of Blessings that blesses everything. I can make the sign of the cross. I can bless a boat or a fishing tackle. I bless tractors. I bless a lot of things, things I thought I would never bless. And I made every time I made the sign of the cross on those things. So the sign of the cross is very powerful in that way. Also, the sign of the cross, when we make it, is invoking God's protection of us. So just like any parent, our Father loves us and God wants to, including protection of us, like any parent or guardian would. And so when we make that sign of the cross, we are asking God to be with us, to protect us from danger, to protect us from evil. And that's how powerful that sign of the cross is. So the sign of the cross is a very powerful way to pray without really saying anything. So during this time, parents, grandparents, guardians, I invite you to take that time with the child and to make the sign of the cross with them and make that often. I invite you to take that time when you sit down before a meal and before you start eating away, make that sign of the cross, giving thanks to God and blessing that food that God has given us that is set out before us. Make that sign of the cross before we go to bed at night, invoking God's protection and also invoking our memories to realize that God is the one who will help us to sleep and God that will help us to wake. We ask for that God who loves us and sustains us to be with us always and a wonderful and simple way that we do that by making the sign of the cross. And so as I end this video for this week, my dear kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, teachers, parents, whoever is watching, I make the sign of the cross on you. And I bless you all. Then I hope that you will have a good week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And God bless you.